Everybody, Ryan Dice here, CEO and founder of Digital Marketer with my friend and a true digital marketing pioneer, uh, Mr. Brian Eisenberg. First off, cheers. cheers. Yep. Congratulations. Brian is the author of the brand new book, Be Like Amazon. And when I say digital marketing pioneer, he also essentially invented like conversion rate optimization, invented the metric known as bounce rate. Uh, I mean, a lot of the things that we take for granted now in digital marketing, um, this man right here pioneered. So when he came out with a new book, and when it was on a book, uh, when, the, when the topic was related to Amazon and e-commerce, I said, number one, uh, we've got to get you on our stage at Content and Commerce uh, Summit. And so if you don't yet have a ticket to Content and Commerce Summit, you need to be there because he's going to be talking there as well. And I said, we also got to get you here into the digital marketer offices to talk about how, how can we as business owners be more like Amazon? So first of all, welcome. Thank you. We are, in, incidentally, we're drinking, why well, we're drinking lemonade because... You're saying even a lemonade stand? Even a lemonade stand could do it. So what do you mean by that? This isn't just a, because I like the idea, okay, be like Amazon. That sounds great. Yep. But um, it seems like to be like Amazon, I would need to have hundreds of millions of dollars in financing. I'd need to like own a fleet of drones, um, uh, compete with the postal service in terms of shipping. But I mean, how does it, how does it work if... I'm a lemonade stand or maybe a little bit bigger. So I think there's two things. So number one, you know, when I'm, we're talking about be like Amazon, we're not necessarily going to get to the same scale as Amazon, right? I mean, you know, Amazon has now 43% of all e-commerce in the United States. That's and, good. And, and growing. Yeah, it's, yeah, it's, it's, pretty, it's, it's, it's pretty good. Yeah. Um, even though we, we've got to keep in mind, right, as a percentage of total retail, that's still relatively small. Right. right. So there's a lot of opportunity still in the retail space, both in, um, you know, brick and mortar and digital and kind of combining that. So I think that's that's the first perspective. The second thing is we're really talking about growth, right? And the expectations that Amazon has had on, on customer experience, uh, no matter what industry you're in. And, and I think that's the challenge that a lot of people have had. So it's like a, it's almost like replacing the operating system. It's like when iOS first came out, yep. right? And everybody was on those old, you know, Blackberries and stuff like that. And all of a sudden it's like, wow, it's a completely new way to think about this There's digital device. It's not even device. anymore. Right. And so... I think that's where we're at today. It's like if we don't start rethinking our operating system to be more like Amazon, right, we're going to be left behind like BlackBerry was. Okay. So give me some tips. Like give me some really – and obviously there's a lot of tips in the book and you definitely – if you don't have the book, you should get it. Um, it, it is available, I'm assuming, at Amazon. It, it is. It would be really and, awkward if it weren't. He's like it's, it's really only at barnesandnoble.com. Um, but it is available on Amazon, so yeah, definitely pick up a copy. Uh, there may or may not be a story uh, in here. I'm not going to tell you where, what it's about, but I may or may not be uh, <laughs> <That's right. laughs> representing a story. That's all I'm going to say about that. That's it. We'll leave but, it there. But give me some quick tips, right? So how can I be like Amazon if I'm a small business? So the first thing we talk about is this, this concept of unifying principles of uh, the four pillars of Amazon. They are the basic beliefs behind why Amazon has been so successful. And if you pay attention to Jeff Bezos' shareholder letters, everything he talks about is based on these four pillars. And we keep finding evidence of how he applies it to new businesses. So he does this obviously in B2B, mm -hmm. right, with, with his web services. He's done it with the Amazon.com retail services. Right. Um, and he's also applied the same principles. There was just a recent article in NPR about the Washington Post and how he basically took the exact same four pillars and transformed them into a profitable entity. And I do think, just to pause on that a little bit, I think it is interesting. Amazon is truly in every type of business. So whether you're e-commerce, retail, whether you're you know, B2B, SaaS, enterprise, uh, if you're information publishing or media, they're in all of them. And you're saying that they apply these four pillars to every single one of these It's businesses. universal way of operating a business today. If you're not doing that, okay. you're using a BlackBerry. <laughs> <laughs> By the way, if, if you're BlackBerry watching this right now, I'm sorry. <laughs> we still love you. You're a great innovator. Um, no, it, you know what? But, yeah. but it, you, we actually start chapter one about that, right? Yeah. Sam, we talk about Sam Walton and Walmart and Kodak and about why some of these businesses failed. When they were first innovating, they were so on top of their beliefs and, and, and wanted to be customer centric. But as they managed and grew and put in layers of management, 
you know, some of that went away mm -hmm. and, and that, that passion about the customer, which is that first pillar, um, just kind of faded away to, to, for management purposes, right? Not in stop their, their growth. Yeah. The bean counters start making the decision, not, not the, the founders and the marketers. So what are, I mean, I got to ask, cause I'm curious, I'm guessing the viewers are too. What are the four pillars? So the first pillar is, is and, and it's the first thing you have to push on is customer centricity. You know, it, it is all about the customer. It's like, you've got to be obsessed over their experience. And the one thing that Jeff Bezos has done so well, uh, opposed to everybody else is he's focused not on his competitors, but how to keep ahead of his customers. So like one of my favorite examples is talking about um, Amazon Echo, Yep. right? And how they've grown that from it's very simple device to now, obviously you can order it, to right now, my favorite example is that uh, Echo Look, where they're asking people who are interested in fashion to, to pose in front of it and look at experts, but they're using that to feed data into their system to get smarter and smarter. So again, it's just how do you keep ahead of your customers? So that's the first pillar. Now, when you have that obsession, you're focused on your customer and they put a chair at every boardroom to represent the customer, you innovate on their behalf, right? To stay ahead of them. And they, they, they actually do that. They, they actually do that. They have an empty chair yep. sitting in every board meeting that represents the customer. And even more than that. So if you're- I love the optics of yeah. that. Like and, if you're, and if you're a product manager and you want to come up with a new product, you actually have to write a press release as if you were, the customer was reading it, mm -hmm. right? About what the benefits were to the customer before you can ever talk about code, before you can ever talk to a product person, it's got to be codified, right? From the customer perspective. So it, that's just the way they're doing it. So you innovate. That's the second pillar, right? So and the you, first pillar was customer centricity. Customer centricity. Pillar number two is innovation. Innovation. Okay. But about bringing value to that customer, right? They, they, they connect. If you're not doing one without the other, because innovation without focusing in on the customer benefit, right? unfortunately doesn't help you grow. Yeah. Now you're just creating features that make you look cool but that your customers, like, they never ask for it. You're, you're, you're answering a question that nobody asked. Exactly. That's right, yeah. The third pillar, which of course comes right after innovation, is you have to have the ability to execute on it. You've got to be agile. And this is what I love about small businesses and, and, and the, you know, the passion both Jeffrey and I have had and, and Roy has had about having owner-operated independent businesses because they can make decisions quickly. Right. Right. That is one thing Amazon is the world's oldest startup. And we talk in a lot of detail about how they've done that in the book, some of the processes they use for that. But the advantage to these smaller businesses is that you should be able to be agile. And if you can't, you've got bigger problems that you've got to deal with. Yep. And arguably that's maybe what happened with some of these companies that have failed. When they lost that agility, it was because the people that were making the decisions were like, oh, we don't want to take that risk. And what if we do, you know, whereas the founder mentality is try it, break it, figure it out, out, do something else, right? It doesn't matter. We can fix it. Right. I mean, we talked about Kodak in there. So Kodak innovated the digital camera in the 1970s. In the 1970s? In the 1970s. Oh, that's heartbreaking. Okay. Yeah. But they couldn't get agile enough yeah. to get out of the film business and say, okay, we're going to sabotage our, our film business. And what I like to say is, hey, if you can put together in your organization a team that's meant to put you out of business, right? So if you can put together a team of eight to 10 people here, right. a digital marketer, and their job is to figure out how they would put you out of business, right? That's what you should be looking for. If it's not someone inside you, or organization, it's going to be someone else. It's someone yeah. outside of it, right? And, and, and you give them the resources. And this is what Amazon has been so great at doing. And yeah. every organization needs to have that. So it's customer centricity. Um, the uh, culture of innovation, culture of innovation, culture and execution. And, uh, uh, yeah. Rapid and, and, and cor corporate agility. Yep. And then the last one is, and, and this is about being able to fail fast and learning quickly is continuous optimization. And it's not just conversion optimization that obviously where, where I first started in this industry, you know, they focus on optimizing everything from, you know, packing materials to operations to returns. No one's ever satisfied to how they clean the bathrooms, hmm. right? You've got to be obsessed over saying, okay, what processes can we get better at, better at? Because if we can keep shaving little percentages off, I can make more profit on little things as I, we get better and better. So you're never done, you never arrive. You're never satisfied, yeah, you're just never satisfied. And it brings it full circle back to the customer because you always wanna streamline that so you can bring back more value to the customer. So what's one, if, 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 I, know, I know there's a lot of specific mm -hmm. and, and tactical tips in the book. I know you're gonna be uh, bringing a lot of really specific tactical things to your talk at Content yep. and Commerce Summit, but give me one. Give me, give me one thing that if I'm, if I'm sitting out there and I'm watching right now, give me one thing that I should try. Maybe, maybe it doesn't work, right? Because not everything works, but, but what's kind of one thing that, that really I should, I should try that Amazon's doing that maybe I'm not? So I'm, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to 
pull a really old school, full circle. Um, our first New York Times bestseller, Call to Action, we published in 2005. Yep, great book. Um, in on, there, on our bookshelf. In there, we talked about having custom printed packing tape. Right. Because right, back then, everyone's kind of just doing generic stuff. We said, just brand that at least, because at least it stands out when, you know, the UPS guy delivers it. You know, you know it was from your product. Right. So I did this the other day, um, a, a number of weeks ago. I did this experiment. I ordered a Rubik's Cube. Okay. Okay. And I ordered one from a prominent toy retailer. Okay. Who may or may not be going out of business over the next few years. Okay. <laughs> and we'll does explain it, why. It, okay, never mind. Oh, yeah. Sorry. Does it rhyme with R us? It, it might. <laughs> they, they might have a giraffe or something involved in their business. I don't know. Um, you'd think with the giraffe, they could see, what, you know, from like. Yeah, yeah, they'd have a better perspective, perspective on Perspective and visibility? No. And then I ordered the same thing on Amazon. So on Amazon, first of all, it ended up being half the price. Okay. Half the price. With shipping everything, half the price. But more importantly, they both arrived in a box. Amazon's box, as you know, has that prime packing tape. Right. And do you ever have your kids open up those boxes? Yeah. Do you ever notice they can rip off? Yeah. Even though that tape is so well done, that paper tape they use, yeah. so well done. There's, there's a team, obviously, at Amazon who obsesses over the fact that it's good enough to close everything, but yet it's easy to rip open. Mm -hmm. That other one, you know those those commercials for the little thing to open up boxes? Yeah. You know, you have to have, or, or a great knife I've learned that you might be able to get, yes. right? You need one of those just in order to open up the box. And then it comes inside and you open it up and it has what? That clamshell oh. packaging. Yeah, the, the all the frustration in the world. And, and you're probably going to open a vein. It, it, that's exactly getting it. Getting this thing out of the box. And what did Jeff Bezos do? He understood this concept of frustration-free packaging. He knows that the experience doesn't end when UPS drops off the box. It's when you're actually using the product. Right. Just a little shift of perspective. And he made a little paper container to open up your Rubik's Cube and you're playing yeah. with it in seconds. So they have their own container. So it creates that. And I think this is big, like a, a big takeaway. Think, how can you add an aha moment post sale? That's exactly How right. can you add an aha moment post sale that's as simple as the tape? That's as simple as the packaging that's in it. So maybe if yours is a digital product, um, maybe there's no tape involved and it's not so much bad. But how do you ensure that what? consumption happens? But I'm going to give you a great, give you great example of this, okay? Because I love this because I think a lot, of, a lot of digital marketers miss this. We live in an omni-channel world. Everybody's competing for our time in a digital environment. So design pickle, as an example, right? Yeah. Those guys, the first thing they do is they want to get your physical address because they want to send you a little, it's a little envelope. And they have the little button in there and some stickers and stuff like that. It's like, you know, what do they spend? Three bucks on it? Yep. But all of a sudden it's like, wow, that's kind of cool. They touched me in a different way. And of course, those are the kinds of things that people take a picture of and yep. they share it. And that's how you just, like, if it turns into one more customer, think about that, how that changes your acquisition costs. It's cost. amazing, you know, Digital Marketer Lab, our, our, our membership, mm -hmm. When they, people become a member, we send a little booklet, but everybody talks about the sticker that comes in there, right? And so what is that? That's kind of the aha moment. And they, and they apply that sticker to their laptop and things like that. So just think, as marketers, I know, we focus all of our attention and effort on getting the sale. But I think, you know, if you're going to try something, if you're going to really take a, you know, a page from this book and from Amazon's book, it's just spend some time thinking about how can we optimize the experience immediately after the sale? How do we optimize the, for the aha? It's How the consumption. Optimize? Yep. Right. The consumption. I can package lemonade all day long, but unless I drink it and I'm like, man, that was good. Good lemonade? It was good lemonade. Actually, actually, this is this is by our friends Jigsaw Health. It's they have a, a zero electrolytes. They're one of those businesses that have lived by the four pillars forever. Um, and one of the things I encourage every digital marketer to do is um, follow their Facebook page to see the videos that they're doing. They're this, doing this is Jigsaw Health? Jigsaw Health. Okay, they're good. Um, yeah, Patrick Company. Sullivan. I mean, great products. Forget about the products and stuff like that. But just to watch their video series. So, you know, it's one of the things that they've innovated this past year where they stream, obviously live video is going huge, right? And so they have one day a week where it's informational. Uh, every Friday, it's a funny Friday. Okay, uh, we just we just passed July fourth, and he did an imitation of David Spade from Joe Dirt. <laughs> nice, and he got mullet and all. Uh, I'm not going to comment. You got to go see it. You got to right. dig it out. Right. But the cool part is David Spade actually shared it Perfect. on top of it all. So again, right? Just think about how that next level goes, and it's just them continuously innovating and delivering that next aha moment. And you just got to keep focusing on that. Perfect. So action items. 
write down the four things. And I would, I would actually say next to the four things, how are you in, in your business today or, you know, in your, in your department, your company living out those four things? That's action item number one. Um, shameless action item number two, get this book. If you don't have it, it's a quick read and it's written in a narrative style. So it's not one of those boring business books. It really reads like a story. And I know. And it's, I and it's packed that. with information. Like a lot of people complain about fables because they're very thin. Right. Right. And it's like, like one, down one to idea that, that, yeah, I got it. Yeah. No, you're going to be, you're going to be highlighting things and taking notes. Very tactical. The other shameless one on Be Like Amazon, we actually have a free quiz that people can take to see where they score on the four pillars. Oh, great. Yeah. So, so you don't have to write down. So go to, is it be like Amazon.com? And so there free evaluation go. right there. Back to action item number one, go to be like Amazon.com, take the quiz, score yourself, see how you're doing, get the book. And then third and most shamelessly of all, if you do not have a ticket to Content and Commerce Summit, uh, go to contentandcommercesummit.com, get your tickets discounted. Tickets are available, but they are almost gone. In fact, by the time you watch this, <laughs> they may be gone. So get your ticket, get out to Los Angeles. See this guy talk, see me talk about God knows what, but it's going to be a really good time. You're going to learn a ton. If you sell anything at all online, anything digital, physical, then you need to be at Content and Commerce Summit so we can help you sell a whole lot more of it. And we can sip uh, some lemonade together there. Absolutely. So cheers, my friend. Cheers. To being like Amazon and uh, to hopefully sell a lot more stuff. Thanks so much for watching and uh, we'll see you in the next one.